Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is May 28, 2020. And in this video, we're going to take a look back at Rob Michael's sale. It was a two-day auction. It happened uh, uh, yesterday and the day before. And the results were quite excellent. As you can see, I'm filming this from a different place than I normally do it. I'm not in my office today. I'm at home. And... Um, I just thought I'd, I'd share that with you and you have a little look around our place here on the water. It's, pre it's pretty nice. Um, uh, and we're going to take a look now and see how Rob did. Rob did great. Uh, given everything that's going on in the world, I, you know, everybody was wondering how well his sale would do. Uh, but the results were quite excellent. And if we click over and take a look uh, at things, we'll see that everything pretty much, it looks like he had about a 90% sell-through rate, maybe 95%. Only a handful of things didn't sell for whatever reason. May have been condition issues. Issues that that weren't readily available they might have had restorations or something but uh, overall the sale did extremely well and a lot of things went well over their uh, estimates as I said last week he, he goes very easy on estimates he does he's not a big believer in heavy estimates because he doesn't think it gets the job done and I agree with him um, uh, a lot of a lot of auctioneers will tell you the reserves are not your friend all the time and as we can see here the prices were very good the moon flask that was estimated at 15 to 25,000 euros Euros went for 20,000 euros. For those of you in the States, that's about $22,000, roughly. Euros trading at about a, about one-tenth of the dollar at this point. And uh, we can flip over here to day two, and uh, equally had very good results across the board uh, from what I could see. And we're going to take a look at a few specific things and get into them and, and, and just see how they did, okay? And one of the pieces was this plate that we talked about last week. I thought it was a wonderful thing, uh, a very good buy. It went for $2,400 with a two to 4,000, uh, uh, 2,400 euros rather, or about $2,700 with a with two to 4,000 dollar estimate. Uh, I think this was one of the great buys of the day. I thought this was a very, very good buy. Very pretty plate, nice condition, and uh, very evocative decoration. As I said last week, it had fish and, and uh, horses and all kinds of sea creatures on it. Very interesting piece of porcelain. And uh, it brought pretty, you know, sort of in the low mid range of its estimate in the end. Uh, the other pieces that did pretty well with this, with there's this pair of uh, Kung Shi vases. Uh, they were Femi Ver. They were b very, very pretty. They were estimated at twenty to forty thousand, and they landed right just about smack in the middle at thirty-two thousand euros, or roughly thirty-five thousand, thirty-six thousand dollars in that range. But they were very, very nice looking uh, pair of vases. I hope you took the time to check them out. Um, as I, I've said many times, Rob does a great job with his photographs, which sells the pieces every time. And uh, he does, a, here's some nice shots. You can see the enamels on this were in really, really good condition. I don't know if it had any repair or not to them. Um, often they do. But uh, for those of you that bid on it, uh, I suspect you, you got a condition report. Maybe somebody can tell me uh, if there was any restoration to those. But it doesn't look like it based on the price. 32,000 euros, 36, 35,000 dollars. And then onto this was that very unusual Kang Shi vase with the iron red decoration all over. I thought this was just terrific. Um, as I said last week, I, I, th I thought it would do pretty well. It has inscription on it and everything, and I thought it would probably go through the estimate, and in the end it did. It was estimated at 2,500 to 5,000 euros, and it sold for 6,000 euros, or, or, or roughly about uh, $6,600 US, uh, but a very good thing. And I don't think that was an overpayment. I, I think the estimate was uh, very reasonable on this, and, and uh, it did well, and I, I'm not all, at all surprised. It was really, really pretty piece. And then over to this, another big Kang Shi Femi Ver vase, estimated at 10 to 20,000 euros, and it went right through it and ended up selling for 24,000, uh, or roughly $25,000. But again, very nice enameling, good coloring, lots of nice overglazed blue enamels, as you can see here and here and here and so forth. Uh, really attractive. And uh, there it is. All right, now we'll mosey on over to this, the little Kangxi stem cup. This was a pretty little stem cup. I liked it a lot. It was estimated, I thought, very reasonably, and it ended up going over its estimate by a few hundred euros. Not a big surprise here. This is a nice form. Uh, it had a very free-flowing sort of decoration to it. Uh, a little bit unusual for Kangxi pieces, but they did do them this way. But you notice the painting up here around the bowl. It's very freehand, very much a freehand sort of decoration, as well as the figures at the bottom and the butterflies around the midsection of the base 
but but a, a very attractive example. And it sold for 2,000 euros or roughly, uh, you know, $2,200. The high estimate was 1,800 euros, which I think I thought I said, I think I said last week was very reasonable. And then on to this, the book by Regina Crowell and John Ayers. This is that famous three volume set. Hard to get these days. This is a hard to get book set of books. It's out of print. It's beautifully illustrated, and it had an estimate of uh, around uh, what was the estimate? It was eight to twelve hundred euros. It ended up selling for seventeen hundred euros, or nearly two thousand dollars. And I'm not surprised. It's a, as I as I said, it's a hard to get set, and uh, you're getting the whole set here, and it looked to be in great shape. Uh, a lot of those, I've seen a number of these, those books where they're just dog-eared after years of use. And then on to this, the transitional bottle vase. I thought this was a really nice one. I like the neck on it a lot, the way it flares out and sort of meets the shoulder further out than most transitional vases. Typically, transitional vases come down a little more straight and then flare out. And this one, this one went more off to the sides. It was estimated at six to 12,000 euros, sold for 9,500 euros, had just one bid, which was interesting. Um, uh, so we'll, uh, I'm not sure quite how it had one bid with an estimate of six to, uh, six to 12,000 euros. I think maybe that's a mistake uh, because it would have opened at 6,000. All right, and now on to this. We had the uh, very, very nice looking uh, Wusai uh, transitional period jar, estimated at two to 4,000 uh, euros, and it ended up selling for well over its estimate. This was a really, really pretty piece. Uh, the enamels also, the iron red, and the overglaze enamels on this were in very, very good condition. And I love this greenish blue they used on the fish. I thought that was a very attractive color. And it was estimated at two to 4,000 euros and sold for 6,000 euros, which I think was uh, perfectly reasonable. That was a very pretty pot, really pretty nice, uh, kind of thing you'd see in the Butler collection. And then on to this, that beautiful pale and Millefiori vase. These vases were in his last sale, and for some reason they didn't get paid for. Who knows? Uh, but this time around they did. Uh, they sold for even more. They were estimated at 20, 40,000 euros again, and they sold for 34,000 euros or around $36,000. But these were very pretty vases. They're Qing period, later Qing, but really, really pretty. Very pretty vases. And um, he, again, has great photographs of them. You can pull it in and you can see the detail. The detail of the work here and the use of yellow is so effective on these. Uh, it, it really made the, made the vases shine. And these were pretty good size. These were 55 centimeters tall each. Um, uh, let's see here, uh, and 65, 66 centimeters on their stands. So these were big. These were over two feet tall on their stands. Very nice presentation when you have vases that big. Really attractive. And then on to this, these Wu Shuang Pu vase. Um, these are always so popular uh, with the inscriptions and so forth, with the story, the fable. And uh, they were estimated at 50, uh, two to one to 2,000 euros. Very, very reasonable. And they sold, it sold for over 5,000 euros, or about 6,000 to 5,800, $6,000. But extremely pretty, uh, nicely done. And this was a good size one, too. This was not a small vase. This vase was uh, 89 centimeters tall. Tall. So it was almost three feet tall, almost three feet. And uh, I, I was surprised by the estimate on this. I thought it must have been must have been something wrong with it for an estimate that low. But it went for 5,500 euros or about six grand, as I said. But uh, very pretty. And then on to this. This was a jar I didn't mention in the video um, last week when I did the preview. And I had meant to. It was on the list. It was this really nice relief decorated dragon vase. Um, there it is, beautifully done, and I, I like this uh, iron red dragon, especially the way he's 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 lifted off. He's in relief over the piece, as is the carp, and then you have the flaming pearl over here, and the dragon has sort of a bewildered look on his face. I thought he was terrific, and uh, very nice use of uh, the uh, blue enamel on here. It made it look like you know, like like water, which was the point. It was with the dragon coming up out of the ocean. And it was beautifully done. And uh, these nice yellow bands of Ruji heads at the top sort of frame it beautifully and set it off. And it sold for 24,000 euros or around $26,000, $27,000 US. 
all right? But that was a very attractive pot, and it was pretty good size, too. It was 54 centimeters tall, uh, so it was, you know, uh, up in the, in the uh, uh, what is that? That's about uh, uh, 18 to 20 inch range. Nice looking thing. And then the, uh, then the, the Baji Xian Xiang Moon Flask. Uh, this was a Qin Lung style example. It was Qing Dynasty. Uh, I thought there was a little speculation about whether or not it was a period one. I didn't think it was, but uh, that was just my opinion. And uh, apparently the bidders agreed because it ended up selling for r- right, in its, right in its estimated range. But this was a nice looking vase, nice looking bottom on it. Very typical of late Qing workmanship. And it sold for 20,000 euros, right smack in the center of its estimate, which was fifteen to $25,000. Uh, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. You know, you have to always keep in mind with these later Qing examples, if the originals, as I said last week, are, are going for, uh, you know, 1.1 to 1.9 million, then, uh, you know, for a late Qing 19th century example, 20,000 euros is pretty reasonable to get the, uh, the same sort of visual effect. And then on to this, the Guangxu 100 Bats dish. I had a number of inquiries on this plate. Um, it was a very, very nice dish, and I, I thought the estimate was okay. And in the, it was estimated at six to 12,000 euros, and it sold for about 9,000 euros, which is perfectly fine. Uh, very attractive dish. Here's the back of it. Good-looking foot on that, nice and round, uh, nicely rounded, good white, creamy color. The glaze here. Always, when you see these photographs, you should always look at the reflection of the light on here. Uh, so you can get a sense of the glaze texture. Um, if it's got lots of little tiny, tiny ripples in it, and it, 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 it you know way too even, uh, be suspicious of it. But this one had nice irregular glaze to it, uh, very typical of the period. And it sold for 9,500 euros or around ten and a half thousand dollars, which was which was in the range. And this was a big dish. This wasn't a little dish. This was 34 centimeters, or about 13, 14 inches in diameter. So it was good size. It was a charger. And chargers are rare. And then on to the bronzes. This was one of the bronzes I locked up, liked a lot. And I thought the estimate of, you know, a high estimate of 2,500 euros was most reasonable for this. This was a very attractive one. If you recall, this is the one that had the, uh, the, uh, the dragon sort of doing a backflip on the ends here. I thought that was really nifty, make it, creating the handles. The patina on it was particularly attractive. And in the end, it did just fine. It brought 4,800 euros. $5,500, roughly $5,300. And I, I think that was a very fair price. I think that was a good buy. I thought the estimate was crazy low on it. I thought it, was, I thought it would do it much better. And then on to this bronze, I, I talked about this. I thought this was a very attractive bronze, um, a, a really, really pretty example with a two to 4,000 euro estimate. It, had, it was one of these wax, uh, lost wax technique castings with the mountain scene on the top. And it's got this peak serving as the handle and the uh, uh, low relief work was beautifully done the patina was undisturbed on it nice looking legs with these beautiful beautifully executed masks very precise very crisp and uh, it ended up selling for 28,000 euros or about seven times its high estimate uh, that you know for, for those in the states that's about thirty thousand dollars but this was a huge bronze this was 44 centimeters in diameter or, or, or roughly uh, 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 what does that bring it in at about 18 inches wide uh, this was a big, big bronze, very nice, and I think the price was, you know, very well deserved. It was a good-looking thing, and then the silver. Remember, we talked about the silver, and silver is very hard to estimate because the the big auction houses don't necessarily handle a lot of Chinese export silver. Um, I think they should. I think they're crazy for not doing it. But this was a, a that elegant big pair of uh, uh, vases that were quite tall. These were uh, how tall? Fifty-four centimeters. And uh, here they are, and uh, beautifully done. They were estimated at twenty to forty thousand uh, euros, because I, I suspect Rob didn't quite know where to put the estimate, so he had to sort of pick a range that seemed fairly sensible. And I think that was the case here. They ended up selling for twenty-four thousand euros, four thousand over the low estimate, or about twenty-six, twenty-seven thousand dollars. But these were a wonderful buy. These were big, fifty-four centimeters, very presentation size. Uh, nice examples, or about 18 inches tall, 19 inches tall. And uh, ditto for this. This was that uh, really, really great large uh, uh, vase, uh, silver vase with the serpents on it. And this was big. I think this was a stunning buy. 68 centimeters tall, over two and a half, about 27 inches tall. 
fabulous detail all the way down the body. Uh, the dragons were spectacularly well done, very delicately applied the claws to the body. And again, you have these, these beautiful mask legs on it, somewhat similar to the Ming um, uh, uh, lost wax technique bronze we just looked at, uh, but a, a, a great example. And I, th I think this was a really great buy. 20,000 euros for this, had a few bids. Um, about $22,000, but this thing was big. It was um, uh, 64 centimeters tall, all right? And that's, that's big, that's uh, 26, 27 inches. Great looking example. And then over here to the screen, I like the screen a lot. He had dated it as Republic, and I, I thought it might have been a little older. I, I still do, but it doesn't matter. It did really well. Uh, he, here it is, nice looking frame on it. The only issue with things like this is the shipping costs. They are a little bit tough. Um, you know, it's going to cost uh, probably $2,500 or so to ship that if somebody in the United States bought it. But it sold for 10,000 euros or around $11,000. So throw in the shipping, you're into it for 13,000. But boy, what a room decoration that thing is. And from what I could see, all of the porcelains were in good shape, which is crucial on these because it's rare to find a screen that doesn't have busted plaques on it. Um, uh, as an aside, a friend of mine was a, a guy named Peter Rosenberg, was a dealer in Connecticut for many years. He had the, uh, the Valen Gallery, great dealer. And he bought a screen at uh, Christie's or Sotheby's one day, and he put it in the back of his van. And instead of standing it on his edge in the back of the van, he laid it flat. He was driving through Manhattan, hit a pothole, and broke, I think it was 36 tiles all in one whack, shattered them to pieces, And because uh, he was in a hurry. Um, never ever uh, lay a pl porcelain screen flat inside of a car. Always stand it on its edge and then tie it up, all right? Otherwise, you hit a pothole, you're doomed. It's going to shatter them. All right, that was just an aside. Okay, and then onto this was that octagonal female uh, rose plate that had the very unusual coloration. I liked this a great deal. I thought it was quite unusual. I liked the people on it. I loved this use of purple around the edge, this aubergine color, really unusual. And uh, the way they, they sort of star pointed it up to, the, up to each edge in this lovely scene of, of, of two women with their children greeting one another. One is arriving on a boat. Uh, really interesting plate. It was estimated very modestly, eight to 1,200 euros. It sold for 2,000 euros. I thought that was a very, very good buy. And the same thing goes for this was that beautiful Kaki Amon um, Shiba Unko dish, Edo period, uh, nice early piece of Kaki Amon, beautifully decorated, nice brown dressing on the rim, beautifully done, overglazed blue enamels. And then the central scene here with the, with the cauldron and the figure standing back aghast and the birds ascending and all that. Just a good example, a real solid piece. And it was estimated at three to 6,000 euros and it went over that, it went for 8,000 euros. But there are a lot of Khaki Amon collectors in the world. And this was a nice one, too. And it was about eight inches in diameter. It was a good size. And um, similar examples have been sold, of course, at Christie's and Sotheby's over the years. Um, and one of them, I think, brought about 14,000 pounds years ago, uh, uh, about 14, 15 years ago, when these were selling for more money. All right, uh, Kaki Amon, like Arita and Amari and all those pieces, all those Japanese pieces that are of great quality, have, have not done well in the price market. If you're a collector, you're delighted because you're able to buy a lot of them. You get a lot more bang for your buck these days. <clears throat> and someday the, this market will come back and everybody will say, gee, weren't you smart to buy these? Because you can, you can sell them, make a little bit of dough on them. But um, uh, this, this was a, a really nice example. And then on to this, the Japanese relief work to read a teapot. I thought this was very unusual. I had a couple of inquiries about it through the uh, uh, preview assistant program of our on bid amount. And I just thought this was a lovely, lovely piece. And uh, relief work Amari uh, Arita pieces of this period are very unusual. Uh, you don't find them very often. As a matter of fact, I, I had seen one once in a museum collection. It might have been the PBD Essex. I'm not sure, but I had seen one somewhere. And I went to try to find one that maybe had sold at auction to give some idea of estimate of value of range on the piece. And I couldn't find one, uh, literally couldn't find one, not at Sotheby's, not at Christie's, not at Bonham's. Tajan didn't have any. Um, I checked the Ashmolean Museum to find one. I couldn't find one there. And they have a huge Arita collection. 
um, one of the best in the world, and I couldn't find it. At any rate, the estimate was 1,500 to 25,000 euros. Went over estimate, and I think one of the people that inquired uh, about it, I said it'll, it, it may go over that 20, over the high estimate. Don't be surprised, even if it went for 3,000 euros, because it was very, very unusual. This was not a big pot either. This was only about six, uh, six or so inches tall, seven inches tall, but highly unusual and beautiful quality. Just the, the quality of this thing was just great. If you're a Japanese porcelain buyer, boy, this was a thing to buy. And, and, and I, I, couldn't find, I couldn't find one that had been through an auction anywhere. Maybe somebody else has, but I couldn't find it. Uh, just a, a, a great rarity. And sometimes when you have a rarity like that, it holds the price down because nobody knows what to base their bids on. Um, is there no comps? When you don't have comps, sometimes you can get a great buy. So do yourself a favor when you're looking at things online that are in a reputable auction house, try to find a comp. And if you cannot find one, you have a pretty good chance of getting a good buy on it because a lot of collectors only pay based on previous auction prices because they, they're not that sure of themselves. They don't buy with their gut. They buy with their, they buy with their checkbooks, basically, by comparing. Um, so in this case, I think somebody got one of the, one of the great buys if you're for a Japanese collector. All right. And overall, the sale did just fine. I can't find anything uh, that looked particularly glaring. There were a few buy-ins on the Yixing pieces. There, were, there was a Kung Shi vase that didn't sell, but it may have been repaired. I don't know. Uh, but everything else that was in good condition, that looked good, uh, did just fine. So congratulations to Rob on another good sale. And I imagine he'll have another one in a few months. And we're going to cover it because I like his auctions. All right. Um, have a great day, and if you haven't subscribed to us yet at bidamount.com on the newsletter page or checked out the global uh, member pages, please do. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube, uh, click the subscribe and notification bells, and you'll get uh, updated. Uh, you'll get a note every time we post a new video. We do at least one a week. And uh, have a great day. It's a beautiful, beautiful summer day, and uh, um, I'm going to the beach. All right. Um, Thanks so much, and uh, see you on uh, next video tomorrow, the, the regular weekly video. All right, bye-bye.